Well, hello, uh, my name is Steve and welcome to our online family service. Uh, we can't meet together in person at the moment, but it's great that we can still join together through video and worship God. And you may remember that over the last few weeks, we've been looking at stories of Jesus in Luke's Gospel. Uh, last week, we looked at how powerful Jesus was, a story about Jesus and a centurion. And Jesus showed his power. He was able to speak and the centurion servant got better just through Jesus' words. That's how powerful Jesus was. And today we're going to be looking at another story about Jesus. It's about a woman who wanted to show Jesus how much she had to thank him for, how much she loved him. And she did it in a rather unusual way. And we'll look at that way later on, because here's what we're going to do today. We're going to start, as we usually do, with a welcome and asking each other about our week. Then we're going to have a game. It involves you running around, so get ready for that. Then we're going to look at our story, the story of this woman who wanted to show how much she loved Jesus. Then it's going to be our craft. And then an action song, a chance for us to praise God with our words and our bodies. And finally, we're going to close in prayer. And we're going to start, as we normally do, with a welcome and a chance to ask each other about our week. What's been something good about your week? What's been something you're thankful for? And as ever, I'm going to need my little helper in here. So let's get him in here now. And here is Theo. Theo, do you want to say hello to everyone? Give him a little wave, say hello. Do you want to say hello? Yeah. yeah. Okay, that's close enough. Now, Theo, what's something you're thankful for this week? What's something that was good? I know. Last Sunday it snowed. It was your first ever chance to play in the snow. Should we have a look with you and Mummy out in the snow here? What do you think about that? That was fun, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. And of course, just because it snowed and you went to the park didn't mean you couldn't play on the slide as well. Here's you in the slide on the snow. And the most important bit of going to the park? Snacks. So here's Theo having his park snack, even though it was snowing. Isn't that right? So yeah, that was really good last week when it snowed. Now, shall we say bye-bye to everyone? Do you want to say bye-bye? Give them a wave? Want to say bye-bye? No, you're still shy. And just like that, he's gone again. But Theo isn't the only one who's been out enjoying the snow this week. Lots of you have too, and I'm very pleased to say we got lots of photos of you out enjoying the snow, something that you're thankful for. Uh, here's a picture of Susanna. This is the first time Susanna's ever been out in the snow, and as you can see, and she's loving it there. And this is Jessica making a big snowball in the snow as well. And here's a picture of Jessica and Susanna together, both out enjoying the snow, both very thankful for the chance to play in snow. Uh, we've also got this picture of Malu in the snow as well, uh, with her mum Michelle and their puppy dog as well. She was out enjoying it, as was Henry. Uh, you can't really see him there, but he's in the stroller and he did go out and play in the snow as well. And Zoe and Mike have been out in the snow too, as you can see here. They've been out playing in it. And you can see they've even built a snowman there as well. I'm sure it'll get bigger than that, but it looks quite good already, doesn't it? And in fact, even though it was snowing, it didn't stop them playing on the roundabout as well. And we've also got some photos in from the Horridges. Here they are, out Rosie and Elijah and Phoebe enjoying the snow too. You can see them there out playing in it. So lots of us this week have been out enjoying the snow that we had last Sunday. Something to be thankful for. It's nice to have something a bit different in the lockdown, isn't it? And now it's your turn. Uh, why don't you go around the people where you are and ask them, what's been something good about your week? What's something you're thankful for? I'll pause the video and then whenever you're ready, why don't you play and come back to it? So ask each other about your week. Well, hopefully you got a chance to share some of the good things about your week. It's good, even at a difficult time, to take a moment to be thankful and say, what can I thank God for about this week? Now, for our game today, we're going to have to get up and run around because today's game is a scavenger hunt. Uh, how this works is that I'm going to tell you something that you need to find somewhere in your house. And then I'm going to set a timer for 20 seconds. And you've got 20 seconds then to go off and find something that matches the description I give you and bring it back here before the time is up. So, for example, if I was to say something like, can you bring me something that you might wear? Then you've got 20 seconds to go off and find something 
that you might wear, an item of clothing like a jumper or a pair of trousers or a hat or something like that, try and find that and bring it back here. And hopefully you've got the idea. So I'll tell you something. You've got 20 seconds to go get it and come back before the time runs out. Okay, are we ready for our first one then? I want you to have a look around and see if you can find a jar or a bottle. And your time starts now. That could be a plastic bottle, maybe something like a Coke bottle or a water bottle. Uh, maybe it could be a jam jar, something like that there. I mean, it doesn't have to be empty, I suppose. That might be harder to find. Can you find a jar or a bottle? And you've got five seconds left. Can you find it and come back? Two, one, zero. And your time is up. And let me stop that. Did you find one? Hopefully you'll have found something like this, a bottle or a jar around your house. Well done if you did that in the 20 seconds. All right, let me give you the next item. I want you to find me something that smells nice, something with a pleasant smell. Could be anything that matches that description. You've got 20 seconds. I've started the timer already. Off you go. Uh, maybe it could be something that smells nice. I think maybe you think something smells nice, like uh, maybe a person. That would be a weird one to bring back. Uh, maybe it could be some flowers. Flowers do smell nice. It's Ruth's birthday this week. We've got lots of flowers around. Oh, and your time is up. I didn't even give you a warning there. Um, as I said, it has been Ruth's birthday, so we've got lots of flowers around. And flowers do smell nice. It's nice to have them around the house. So there we are. That's your next one. Okay. I want you to bring me something you'd wear on your foot. And I'm starting the timer now. Something you'd wear on your foot. I mean, is that pretty much a shoe or a sock? Is there anything else you wear on your foot? Maybe a sandal or a Wellington boot or a welly, whatever you want to call it. Maybe something like that there. Well, you better run quick because you've only got five seconds left to bring me one now. Three, two, one. And time is up. Did you find something? I, of course, bought my sock. You can see it there. Also would work for something that smells nice, I think. That was, that's quite nice, that one. Okay, let's see if we can find something that you would use for your hair. Something that would go in your hair or you would use in your hair. I'm starting the clock now. You have 20 seconds. What's something you could put in your hair? Maybe it's a hair clip, something to tie your hair back. Maybe it's something you use to brush your hair. Maybe like a hairbrush. I could do that as well. Oh, maybe you could do something else that you put in your hair. I don't know. I mean, I don't put a lot of things in my hair. Maybe you might know better than me. You have two seconds, one second, and time is up. As I said, I don't really have many hair clips, so I went for a comb. You can see my comb here. And as my hair gets longer during lockdown, I go and need it more and more. Hopefully you find something to go in your hair, like my comb. Okay, we're going to have three more. It's your last three chances. I want you to bring me some money. I've started the timer. It's simple. It could just be a note or a coin or something like that. Can you find some money? Where do you keep that? Maybe you've got some stored somewhere. Maybe mummy or daddy could open their wallet and lend you one. Well, you've got five seconds. So you better be quick. Can you find some money? Two seconds, one second, and time is up. And hopefully I have some money in my pocket. Yes, I've got a two pound coin here and put that down here. Right, two more to go. Um, I want you to find me something you'd use to wipe something away with, something to clean something up, to wipe something away with. What could that be? I'm starting the timer now. What would you use to wipe? Maybe it's a cloth, maybe it's a face cloth or a tile or something like that. Something that you would use to wipe up with. What could that be? Can you find it? Well, you've got less than 10 seconds now. In fact, you've got five seconds, so you better be quick. Find me something to wipe with in two seconds, one second, and time is up. This maybe is a bit quick. It is a bit quick. Just stop the video and do it at your own pace. See what you can find. I decided to get some kitchen roll. Whenever you spill something, you can wipe it up and clean it up with kitchen roll. So we have that as well. Okay, this is the last one. And this one, well, let's end in a big one because I want you to find me something big. Doesn't matter what it is, something big. I'm starting the clock now. What's something really big? Now, you probably can't carry something really heavy like a piano, but what's one of the big things that you could carry? Maybe a big cuddly toy, a big teddy bear, something like that. Uh, maybe it could be a big person. You've got five seconds to think what it might be now. 
and two, one, and that's time. Did you manage to find something big? Well, here's my big thing that's waiting here. It might not look that impressive at the minute, but when you open it out, and this might get too big now to show on camera, it turns into a great big house, which is, all right, okay, that's too big to show here. So I'm gonna put it down the side. You can see part of it here. That is something big. Well, hopefully you did all right finding some of those objects. And those are all things that are gonna come up in our story today. Our story today is gonna to involve something in a jar or perfume. It's perfume in a jar, I was kind of giving that away. A bottle or a jar with perfume in it. And perfume, of course, is something that smells nice like we found earlier. And today's story also involves feet. So it's gonna involve something you wear in your feet. Well, actually it doesn't involve anything you wear in your feet, it involves your actual feet. That's why I asked you to get that one. It also is gonna involve hair. Why is it gonna involve hair as well? And then Jesus is gonna tell us about money. Where's that gonna come in? And wiping things away. And it's also gonna be a story about something very big, like this house here. Well, let's hear our story now that Alexandra is going to read to us. It's from Luke chapter seven about a woman who wanted to show how much she loved Jesus, how much she had to thank him for. It involved different things like this. So look out in the story for things that smell nice, for feet, for hair, and all these different things. And Alexandra's going to read it to us now. Hi, everyone. Uh, today's reading is from Luke's Gospel, and it's from chapter 7. A Pharisee invited Jesus to have dinner with him. So Jesus went to the Pharisee's home and got ready to eat. When a sinful woman in that town found out that Jesus was there, she bought an expensive bottle of perfume. Then she came and stood behind Jesus. She cried and started washing his feet with her tears and drying them with her hair. The woman kissed his feet and poured the perfume on them. The Pharisee who had invited Jesus saw this and said to himself, If this man really were a prophet, he would know what kind of woman is touching him. He would know that she is a sinner. Jesus said to the Pharisee, Simon, I have something to say to you. Teacher, what is it? Simon replied. Jesus told him, Two people were in debt to a moneylender. One of them owed him 500 silver coins and the other owed him 50. Since neither of them could pay him back, the moneylender said that they didn't have to pay him back anything. Which one of them will like him more? Simon answered, I suppose it would be the one who had owed more and didn't have to pay it back. You were right, Jesus said. He turned towards the woman and said to Simon, have you noticed this woman? When I came into your home, you didn't give me any water so I could wash my feet, but she has washed my feet with her tears and dried them with her hair. You didn't greet me with a kiss, but from the time I came in, she has not stopped kissing my feet. You didn't even pour olive oil on my head, but she has poured expensive perfume on my feet. So I tell you that all her sins are forgiven, and that is why she has shown great love. But anyone who has been forgiven for only a little will only show a little love. Then Jesus said to the woman, your sins are forgiven. Some other guests started saying to one another, who is this who dares to forgive sins? But Jesus told the woman, because of your faith, you are now saved. May God give you peace. Thanks, Alexandra. Now, when you hear that story, a lot of it might seem a bit odd with feet and perfume and hair and everything. So let me try and explain what's going on here. I'm going to start by asking you a question. Now, I know we can't have visitors to our house anymore, so you're going to have to cast your mind back a bit. But if someone came to visit you at your house, what are some of the things you might do to make them feel welcome? What might you do to make them feel comfortable when they come to visit you? What might you think of? Well, let me tell you of a couple that I thought of. Well, when somebody first arrived, what you might do is say hello to them and perhaps you might give them a big hug and say hello. I know we can't do that now with visitors, but imagine back in the day when you could do that. You say hello and give them a big hug to say, welcome, welcome to my house. 
Uh, what else might you do? You might also say, well, let me take your coat and go hang it up. So you take their coat off them and you'd go hang it up. That way they wouldn't feel really warm sitting around in their coat and they could have it when they go out. And one other thing I think you might do is offer them a drink, perhaps a cup of tea, like this one. And that way they could feel like they've got a drink, they feel welcome, they feel comfortable in your house. So perhaps those are some of the things you do, maybe a hug, take their coat and offer them a drink. Well, 2000 years ago when Jesus was on earth, things weren't much different in terms of when somebody came to your house, you want to make them feel welcome, want to make them feel comfortable. Although what they might actually do would be quite different. Well, let's look at what you would do 2000 years ago to make somebody feel welcome when they came to your house. Well, 2000 years ago, whenever you were walking around, the roads weren't like we have today. They weren't like tarmac roads or paving slabs on the pavements. The roads would be very dusty and dirty and hot, maybe perhaps more like a path through a forest or somewhere around the green, more like a walking path there. So that meant that whenever you came to somebody's house, your feet would probably be dirty and dusty and very hot, a bit like this here. Yeah, you can see, this is what we might be like if you've been out walking on dirty, dusty roads. Your foot would be all hot and sweaty and dirty. So what do you think a good host would do if you arrived at their house with hot and sweaty and dirty feet? Well, they'd probably give you some water to wash your feet and maybe something to dry it as well. Um, maybe it would look a bit like this here. So guests would put their feet in the uh, water and give it a clean, wash it up and dry it up. And that way they'd feel comfortable. Now we said earlier, whenever somebody comes to your house, you might say hello and in the old days, give them a big hug. Well, in Jesus' day, one of the ways that you would greet somebody is with a kiss. You maybe give them a kiss like this here. Mwah, mwah. And that was a way of saying, welcome, welcome to my house. So one of the ways you make people feel welcome is with a kiss. And another way was this here. It's olive oil. Now this bit might seem really crazy to us, but what you'd do is you'd offer them some olive oil for them to pour on their head and that would help them feel clean and fresh and smell a bit better. Um, I've not taken the top off this one because I didn't want to actually pour olive oil in my head. It was fine 2000 years ago, but it's a bit strange for us today. But these are some of the things that you would do to make somebody feel welcome and comfortable when they arrived at your house. You would give them some water to wash their feet that were all dusty and dirty. You would greet them with a kiss and you give them some olive oil to pour on their head to freshen them up. Well, except in today's story, that didn't happen. You see, there was a Pharisee called Simon who invited Jesus to come to his house. So let me get our Jesus out here for today. When Jesus came over to Simon's house, I'll be Simon. Well, Simon didn't give him any water to wash his feet. Simon didn't greet him with a kiss, nothing at all. And Simon didn't give him any olive oil to put in his head. It wasn't a very nice welcome from Simon, was it? No, Simon wasn't very kind towards Jesus. Didn't really make him feel welcome when he came to visit him. And as they were getting ready to eat, something very unusual happened because a woman came to see Jesus at Simon's house. Let's get her out here. Here's the woman. Now, the woman might be somebody who'd done a lot of bad things previously in her life. In fact, she was a sort you might have called a bit of a bad sort. But she had come to see Jesus and she'd come to show her love towards Jesus. And she did it. Well, in quite a strange way. Let me tell you what happened. She went over to Jesus and she started crying. <laughs> My great crying back out there again. And she started crying on Jesus' feet. <laughs> <laughs> and that way, she wet Jesus' feet. And then she started to dry Jesus' feet using her hair. So she got her hair and started to dry Jesus' feet like that there. And then she went a step further and she got, if I can get it out, a bottle of expensive perfume. And she opened this bottle up, which is not easy when you've got one hand. She opened this bottle of perfume up and then poured it on Jesus feet. It was a very expensive bottle of perfume this year. So let's put a little bit on Jesus feet like that there as well. And she carried on wiping the feet 
with her hair. Mm, it smells really nice, that perfume. It's really good. Now, they were sitting around watching this, and it was a very unusual thing, even in those days, for that to happen. And Simon was thinking to himself, he wasn't pleased, he's a bit grumpy, and he went, well, if this Jesus, if he really was a prophet, he would know what type of woman this is. A woman who's done a lot of bad things, she's a bad sort. And he wouldn't let a woman like this touch her feet. So Simon was really miserable and was really disapproving of what the woman had done and didn't like the fact that Jesus let her do it. But actually, Jesus knew exactly what this woman was like and knew that it was her way of showing Jesus how much she loved Jesus, how much she wanted to thank Jesus. So Jesus told this story and Jesus said, now imagine there were two people who owed a man some money. Now, one of these people owed the man 500 pounds. Let's say this woman here owed 500 pounds to the man. And another person owed the man 50 pounds. Let's say I owe the man 50 pounds. But the man says, do you know what? Forget about it. Forget about it. Neither of you have to pay me back. So Jesus asked, now, which person do you think would love the man more? Is it the person who didn't have to pay back £500 or the person who didn't have to pay back £50? Well, Simon thought, and well, he knew where this was going, and he said, well, it's probably going to be the person who owed £500 because, you know, she owed a bigger amount and that was wiped away. That was forgiven. And Jesus said, you're right, Simon, but that's a lot like the story of this woman and you. Hey? Eh? thought Simon. Because, Simon, you see, whenever Jesus came to Simon's house, whenever I came to your house, Simon, you didn't give me any water to wash my feet. You didn't greet me with a kiss to make me feel welcome. And you didn't give me any olive oil for my head. You didn't make me feel welcome at all. But this woman, well, she has cried to wash my feet with her tears. She has dried my feet with her hair. She has spent her money in this expensive perfume to put on my feet so I would smell nice. You didn't even give me olive oil. She gave me this expensive perfume. And why? Well, because all her sins are forgiven. She, she wanted to show Jesus how thankful she was. She wanted to show Jesus how much she loved him. But Simon, someone like you, who thinks he only needs to be forgiven a little, will only show a little love. So Jesus said to the woman, your sins are forgiven. Because of your faith, you are now saved. May God give you peace. So that's the story of Simon, Jesus and the woman. The woman who showed Jesus a lot of love and wanted to thank Jesus a lot. And Simon, who didn't really show Jesus much love at all. So what's Jesus trying to tell us in this story? Well, the woman in this story, she knew that she'd done a lot of things wrong. She knew that when Jesus forgave her, he needed to forgive her for a lot. So she wanted to say a big thank you to Jesus, show Jesus a lot of love. And she did this by crying on his feet and wiping it with his hair and pouring expensive perfume, a way of showing how much she loved Jesus. But Simon here, he thought he was a good person and thought to himself, I only need to be forgiven for a little. I don't actually need that much from Jesus. So he only showed Jesus a little bit of love. I mean, he didn't give him any water to wash his feet or even greet him with a kiss or olive oil for his hair. Simon only showed a little love towards Jesus. But you know who was more right out of Simon and the woman? It was the woman. Because the woman understood better how much Jesus has done for us, how much he's done, how much we need to be forgiven. What a big deal it is that Jesus can forgive us. The woman understood this far better than Simon. You see, all of us have turned away from God. All of us need to be forgiven by Jesus. Me, you, the woman and Simon as well. So we should all show Jesus a lot of love. We should give Jesus a big thank you for what he's done for us. So I'd say in this story, be more like the woman. Don't be like Simon in the story. Don't show Jesus just a little bit of love. Show Jesus a whole lot of love. We have a lot 
to say thank you to Jesus for. And in our craft today, we're going to make our own bottle of perfume. Uh, You may remember in the story, one of the ways the woman showed how much she loved Jesus was with a bottle of perfume that she poured on his feet. So let me show you the things you'll need to make your perfume. Uh, You're going to need a bottle or jar to put it in, obviously. And you're going to need some warm water. I have about 200 milliliters in a jug here. And then we need some things that smell really nice to go in the water. Uh, I've got some rose petals here. You can choose any flower petal you like the smell of as well. Just pick them up from flowers in your house or out and about you see. And you're going to need some, I recommend some citrus fruit. I've got some lemon here, some dried lemon. You can use fresh lemon too. And I've got some lemon just to add even more lemon flavour to it. And then I've got vanilla extract. So I'm going to have a rose, lemon, vanilla flavoured perfume. But choose your own flower, your own fruit, uh, your own extract as well. Also, you're going to need a fork to do some mushing up and a sieve and a bowl. So let me show you how we're going to make our perfume. I'm going to put the bottle to the side because we don't need that at the moment or the sieve. So what we're going to start with is our bowl and add in some water. So I've got warm water in here. It helps the flavours come out quicker. And we're going to start by adding in some flowers. Now I've got some rose flowers here as well, but what's also good is if you can sort of mush them up a bit to get as much of that flavour out as possible. So I'm going to get some of my rose petals and mash them and crush them up as much as possible. Maybe if you get an adult to help you, you could cut them up with a knife as well, but be careful when you're using a knife. So we want to put as much in there as possible. I'm going to grab handfuls upon handfuls and scrunch them up. And hopefully you'll start to smell some of that flower flavour coming out. Um, and I'm going to put as much as possible in here. I'm going to put the whole lot in, but let me get them as mushed up. Um, it doesn't really matter about what bits you put in, because as long as they smell nice, they can all go in. And we will put it through the sieve later on. So there is our flowers, in my case the roses, and I'm going to mix it around to get it all mixed into the water. Hopefully yours will start to smell nice too. And then we're going to have our fruit. Mine's a lemon. And again, break it up as much as possible. And if you're like me and you're doing a lemon, you'll start to smell a really strong lemon flavour come through. We'll put that in. And I'll put these bits I've already done in here as well. Again, give that a good mix up. Oh, and you really can smell the lemon and rose coming through now. And then because I want even more lemon, I really like the smell of lemon, I'm going to add some lemon juice to it as well. So pour in a few drops, maybe a bit more of lemon juice. And just a final touch, I'm going to add some vanilla, a little bit of vanilla extract. There we go, to give you a vanilla flavour. So here I have my bowl full of mashed up rose petals. I also have some lemon and some lemon juice and some vanilla. Now, what we need to do is to leave this for a long while to let the flavours and the smells come out of the rose, come out of the lemon and into the water because the water bit's going to be the perfume. So I think we should leave this for about 30 minutes or maybe even longer if you can. And while that's a stewing and brewing, let's listen to a song. I'm going to play a song that's called Just As I Am. It's all about coming to Jesus just as you are, like the woman in the story. No matter what you think about yourself, how bad you think you are, what others think about you, it doesn't matter. We can come to Jesus just as we are. And it's a special version because it doesn't really have any instruments in it. It has one person singing four different parts. I really like it. Let's see if you do. So we're going to play now Just As I Am while we leave this to soak. Just as I am with
later as I say you might want to leave yours for a bit longer than just that song to soak and really get the smells into the water but let me show you what we need to do to finish our perfume so you've got here your bowl which is full of the fruit my lemons and the flowers the rose petal and the vanilla extract and maybe just give it one last mush up to really get the flavors and the smells out into the water like that there maybe give it a big smell hopefully it smells nice mine does there as well now what we're going to do is to drain it. We just want water, we don't want all these different bits in it. So I'm gonna pour this through a sieve into a jug here. So just be a bit careful with this here as we go through. And then when you've got it in the sieve as well like this, give it a bit of a mush to make sure you get all that last bit of smell out into the water. These last little bits are probably the most smelly bits. So give it as big a squeeze as you can. And then, well, we're nearly there. What you might want to do at this point is really smell what your perfume is like. Maybe take a little bit, put it on the back of your hand and give it a sniff. Oh, it's a vanilla-y, lemony rose smell, which is what we put in it. And then the final bit is to pour it into our bottle. Already our final perfume. Here we go. And I'm going to put the cap on it. So that's it. That's our bottle of perfume just like the woman had in the story that she poured on Jesus' feet. As I say, have fun playing around with this with yours, trying out different flowers, different fruits, different things, and see what you think smells best. Well, now it's time for our action song, a chance to praise God with our voices and our bodies. And today the song is Every Move I Make. It's a song about doing everything with Jesus, Jesus being part of everything we do. I'm going to hand over now to Ruth, Sarah and Jessica who are going to lead us.
Thank you, Ruth, Jessica and Sarah. And in our prayers today, we're going to take a moment to say sorry to Jesus. Uh, we heard in the story how Jesus forgave the woman and Jesus can forgive us too. Uh, we've all done things wrong. We've all turned away from God. We need to say sorry and be forgiven. So it's good to take a moment and think, what do I need to say sorry to God for? What do I need to ask Jesus to forgive me for? And to help us with that, I'm going to use this dirty pebble. You can probably see it's covered in dirt and dust. And um, You might want to get something dirty, maybe a pebble or something else and make it dirty. So you can join in with this bit as well. If you do, pause the video and come back to it. And what we're going to do is to think of something we might want to say sorry for. Uh, maybe what could we say sorry for? Maybe the times when we've not put God first in our life. We've not done what God wanted us to. Maybe we've hurt or upset somebody. Maybe we've lied. Maybe we've not helped someone we could, whatever it is. We can say sorry to Jesus and he can wipe it away, forgive us and get rid of it. So take a moment now to say something you want to say sorry for. Then I'm going to say a prayer together. We say sorry to Jesus. And as I do that, I'm going to put this pebble in here and clean it. And just like the pebble or the dirt and the dust on it is gone, so the things we say sorry for, Jesus can forgive us and make them gone. So take a moment to think, what can I say sorry for? And then if you agree with the prayer at the end, say Amen. And now as I pray, I'm going to wash the pebble in the water. And as the pebble gets clean and the dirt gets washed away, so when we say sorry to Jesus, the bad things, the things we haven't done right, will get washed away too. So let me put the pebble in here and clean it as I pray. Most merciful Jesus, we are sorry we've sinned in what we thought, what we said, what we've done. We're sorry we've not loved you with our whole heart. We're sorry we've not loved others as ourselves. Please forgive us. Help us to change, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you. Amen. And here is our pebble, all clean, all the dirt and the dust is gone. And that reminds us when we say sorry to Jesus, he can forgive us. And all the things we say sorry for are gone. And we're clean again, we're forgiven. It's good to remember that Jesus can forgive us when we say sorry. And let me end our service now with this prayer of blessing for us all. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine on us and be gracious to us. The Lord turn his face towards us and give us peace. Amen. Well, thank you for joining with us today as we look at the story of Jesus and this woman. A woman who wanted to show Jesus how much she loved him. She did this by washing his feet with her tears and drying it with her hair and pouring expensive perfume on it. The woman knew how much Jesus had done for her, wanted to say a big thank you to Jesus and how much she loved Jesus. And when we too realise how much Jesus has done for us, we should say a big thank you to Jesus. We should show Jesus a lot of love. So be like the woman. Well, do join us next week if you can as we look at another story of Jesus from Luke's Gospel. Until then, I hope you stay safe and well and goodbye.